welcome to Gradient Tutorials, your resource for quick videos to learn how to use Paper Space Gradient. In this two-part video tutorial, we're going to talk about getting started with Gradient Notebooks. Gradient Notebooks allow users to launch GPU-enabled Jupyter Notebooks from their browser in a quick manner, and they can easily be shared with collaborators. In this first video, you can expect to learn the ins and outs of the Notebooks resource, and how to launch a Gradient Notebook using one of our recommended runtimes. To get started, Make sure that you're logged into Gradient and go to the console. From there, navigate to the project of your choice or make one, and then go into the Notebooks tab if you're not already. Once you're there, hit Create to create a notebook. This is the Notebook Create page. It has three sections of interest. Runtimes, Select a Machine, and Advanced Options. Let's look at Runtimes first. Runtimes are based on custom containers provided either by Paperspace or our partners that help you quickly get a notebook with your needs pre-installed and ready to be used. There are recommended and a full list of all runtimes available. And we're just going to start today working with Paperspace plus Fast AI, which contains a fantastic course of ML exercises in IPython notebook form written by some of the best ML educators on the planet. We really can't recommend going through it more strongly. Next, we have the Select a Machine section. Here you can choose from our diverse selection of GPU and CPU powered instances. The options available to users differ by their subscription plan, but anybody viewing this can access the free GPU, so let's just use that for now. As you can see though, there are quite a few other available, ranging all the way up to clusters of A100s. You can also set your auto shutdown time to vary anywhere between one and six hours for the free GPU instances. For now, let's just use six hours. Finally, we have the advanced options section. Here you can input a GitHub repo to set your workspace up with that repo's files, and you can input a container stored online for your use in the notebook. Since we're using the fast AI runtime, this information is already filled in for us, and we'll talk more about using the advanced options in part two of these series. If you followed all my instructions, you should have completed setup, and you can go ahead and hit Start Notebook. Once your notebook is up and running, you can get started executing code cells at any time. Keep in mind this information bar on the bottom left. Whenever we want to know if our instance is doing something, so to speak, we can look at the bottom bar to see what's going on with our machine. Now, let's look at some code. If you're not already there, you can use this file manager on the left to open 01 underscore intro to IPYNB, and then navigate towards that first cell. Now that we're here, we can run this cell to install Fastbook, import Fastbook, and begin setting up for using Fastbook. But what if we wanted to make that pip install live in a cell on its own? Well, we can add a new cell at any time, or a new markdown cell, using these convenient buttons available at the top of each cell. So I'm going to add a new code cell and transfer this pip install up here. Clean up a little bit. If you've accidentally added an extra cell, you can simply delete it by clicking on these three buttons right here and selecting Delete Cell. Now that that's done, we can run our cell by either doing Shift plus Enter or clicking this Run button in the bottom left corner of the cell. Now our installs are separated from our imports and we can add new code and markdown cells wherever we like. I recommend you go through the rest of this and the other provided notebooks on this instance to see how the IPython notebooks run just like any IPython notebook on your local machine. Gradient notebooks can handle other file types as well. For instance, you can navigate into the requirements.txt file over here on the left by clicking on it in the file manager. And here, we can add and modify anything we want for our own personal purposes. You can also use this ubiquitous text editor to create and edit Python script files, but more on that later. Some other features to keep in mind in Gradient Notebooks are access to our instances logs, same here. A metrics dashboard, which shows relevant information about the hardware we're using for this instance. As well as the history feature, which gives us access to versioning for our Gradient Notebook. Now that you've seen how to use one of the prepared runtimes for Gradient Notebooks, check out the rest of the available IPYMB files in here. They offer an excellent intro 
or refresher into machine learning, and you can use this opportunity to play around with and get used to the Gradient Notebooks environment. When you're done working within the notebooks, you can stop the notebook by clicking on this instance panel right here and clicking Stop Instance. You can also do it at any time by clicking the Stop Instance button in the top status bar. As you can see, free GPU notebooks will shut down after six hours, but paid instances can set their auto shutdown time to be as long or short as desired. In this tutorial, we saw how to create a notebook using the paper space provided runtimes and learn how to run cells, add new cells, delete new cells, and use the various features of the Gradient Notebooks environment. Stay tuned for part two of this tutorial series where we will set up a custom runtime using a GitHub URL and a Docker container. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy using Paperspace.